Hey folks, Jeff here at Back to Country. So uh, today we got a, a little bit different uh, video. And this is uh, basically because, um, I guess by chance, whatever. So uh, we're working on a, a razor side by side. So our uh, yesterday our neighbors came over, they got a new to them. Uh, razor side by side it's a 2011 900 razor uh, with fuel injection i believe they're all electronic fuel injection but uh, they drove it up here and and uh, stopped we talked a bit and then they went to start it and it wouldn't start and so uh, you know we jumped into working on it and i'm learning a lot as we go here so let me kind of walk you through uh, what's going on and what I've learned so far on working on this thing. Okay, so here's the uh, 2011 900 EFI Razor. And so, like I say, they went to start it and it wouldn't start. So what was happening, you turn the key, you could hear the starter spin, but it wasn't engaging. Okay, so first thought is... Uh, well, the starter's not engaging, so it's it's just spinning. So if we think about how a motor vehicle works, you know, you typically have uh, like a Bendix or whatever in your starter that kicks it forward to make it engage. And so usually when it's not engaging, that can be like a starter solenoid issue or whatever. And so the first thing we did, we had to locate the starter solenoid. We pulled the seats out and everything. We pulled some panels. And we discovered that the starter solenoid is right down here behind the battery under the driver's seat. So what we did to check that is we basically just jumped across the uh, two terminals to see if that fixed it. And it didn't. It still, the starter just spun, no change at all, which basically told me that the, uh, the solenoid is not the problem. So then the next thought was, well, it must be the starter. So probably this thing, uh, before they bought it, had sat for, for two years. And uh, so the next thing we did was we pulled the starter out. And when we pulled out the starter, what I learned is that, well, this is a different type of starter. It doesn't use a Bendix type system. So there is no... Uh, system of engagement this starter does nothing more than spin so you've got this geared shaft here it doesn't pop out or anything it sits into these gears here uh, and it spins so when we heard this spinning that means the starter was working just fine and the truth is we didn't need to pull it so lesson learned there but remember, we don't have zero experience with these things, so we're learning as we go. Uh, we just start diving in, trying to find the problem. And so, uh, let me talk to you about, I guess, how we got to this, this process or how we got to where we are so far. So this panel here in the bed uh, comes off, and you can see the engine here. So you've got a breather box that sits in here and, you know, covers everything. Here's your uh, air intakes, uh, breather, breathers, I believe they call them. Uh, so basically, you know, when you hit the throttle, that opens up, takes air in through the air intake, which is where your air filter is. In this case, the air intake hooks to all these different uh, air channels whatever you want to call them tubes whatever so they come up here so if you were to take this into deep water or whatever uh, that's so that you don't get water into your engine so uh, these air intake deals throttle bodies that's what they're called these are the throttle bodies and uh, you know that the fuel injectors sit right up here here's the fuel tube and so, you know, your injectors will inject fuel right behind these butterfly 
deal so as you let air in it mixes with the fuel goes into the cylinders you know like a regular combustion engine and does that so the uh, to get to the starter the starter sits way down underneath there and I will say that it's kind of a bear to get out so so the starter sits way down in there and it's got two bolts that go into the back of the starter right here now the key to getting those out we used a uh, quarter inch drive small ratchet with a uh, 12 inch extension and then a uh, universal joint or wobbly socket whatever you want to call it so the we had a uh, adapter in there to make, you know, between the extension and the socket, a wobbly joint, you know, so that you can move that thing all over. Because what you gotta do is you gotta get down in there, the socket goes that way, the uh, extension has to come up this way best you can, and you're turning your wrench down here somewhere. Otherwise, you would have to try to get your hand way down in there and work that out, and that would be a bear, so. Uh, that universal joint, wobbly socket, whatever you want to call it, uh, is definitely the key to getting that thing out. The other uh, thing is that these are two different size uh, nuts on that. So you've got a uh, 8 millimeter and a 10 millimeter. And so uh, the unique thing, the 8 millimeter is this dual deal so you've got your negative uh, grounding wire hooks on the outside and then this actually is the one that holds the starter in so you got to remove your grounding wire and then you've got to pull your uh, other the rest of that out to pull the starter but in this case we learned we did not need to pull that starter because there's nothing wrong with it so if you have one of these uh, Polaris's and you're getting a uh, similar situation where the starter is just spinning and it's not it sounds like it's not engaging the problem is not the starter the starter is working just fine if you turn the key and you just get click 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 and uh, nothing happens okay then it might be the starter uh, could be the solenoid but if the starter is spinning so you hear the zzzz, zzzz, as it's trying to start, there is nothing wrong with a starter and there's nothing wrong with a solenoid. That's the first thing that I've learned from working on this thing. Where the problem appears to be, you have uh, this cover here and the stator is inside of it. So the stator, I believe, is what's used to create you know power to charge the uh, b battery the electrical system you know so instead of having an alternator or whatever it's got basically a generator in it that uh, creates your uh, 12 volt power to charge up your system and run uh, auxiliary stuff like your stereo or whatever you want lights etc so anyway uh, this system here you know you've got a series of of gears your starter pushes into there it connects to this gear which is turning this bigger gear here and let me come down here on the side where it mounts up so this all mounts down here and uh, here's where all that gear mechanism is so that hole there that you see going through that's where the starter comes in and touches these other gears and then you've got that bigger gear right there. It spins that, which then spins another gear that you can see down there behind the flywheel. And uh, there's a bearing in there behind the flywheel. And uh, it's got springs in it and stuff. And we suspect that uh, that bearing is out. And so that's why nothing's engaging. They just spin, but they don't engage. They don't lock up. So what we've got to do next is we got to pull this flywheel. 
Well, unfortunately, to pull the flywheel, you know, you've got to remove that nut, and then you've got a, a big puller that uh, is made specifically for this. You can see there's threads on the outside of that section. So you've got these threads right here. So there's like a big uh, nut that threads onto that. And then you've got another deal that's in the center of that that screws in and uh, basically will pull that flywheel off. So we had to order that. We also ordered the bearing that goes behind it because that's what we suspect is the problem. And, uh, you know, we ordered some gasket stuff and everything else. And I think we're going to replace the uh, fuel injectors while we got it apart because it's not running perfect because it sat for a few years. All the uh, filters and everything are clear, but we think the injectors are a little bit gummed up as far as how well it runs with that old fuel in it, you know. Ethanol fuel, when it sits for a few years, that's just a bad combination. So, uh, might as well fix it while we got it tore apart. Anyway, once those parts come in, we'll uh, tear this thing down the rest of the way and make sure that that is our problem. We'll show it to you as we go along. Uh, as far as taking off that stator, uh, there's just a whole bunch of 8 millimeter bolts that go all the way around this thing. Now we also pulled a hose that was in our way and uh, these ho this hose right here runs down and connects down there and we pulled that off to get it out of the way because it was kind of blocking our ability to pull that stator off. And that's the cooling. That's like a heater hose or something. It's, it's full of uh, antifreeze. So... Yeah, that came splashing out. It was a little bit of a surprise, but uh, we got it. No worries. We'll fill that back up with, with water and antifreeze and be good to go. But just so you know, that hose that runs there, it is a cooling hose. Uh, and is full of uh, antifreeze, coolant, whatever. So anyway, that's where we're at on this project. Stick with us. Let's see how it goes. All right, so you got your flywheel there. First thing we had to do is take the nut off the center of the flywheel. Now the preferred method would be with an impact wrench. However, as you can see from the position of the shock, without pulling that shock and everything, there's no way to really get an impact wrench in there. So uh, we just don't have the patience to do all that. So two methods you can either take a strap wrench and put it around to hold that flywheel because the, the flywheel will turn or uh, we took a bolt there and just wedged it in the tooth and the case and that held it enough to break the uh, bolt free and get that out so uh, you just got to be creative on this stuff but at the end of the day the bottom line is it's off so next thing we got to do is put the puller on there so the polar uh, threads on, reverse threads. Hopefully. Supposed to be reverse threads. Okay, well, a little bit too much coffee this morning. There we go, it's threading on. And then uh, you got a center uh, nut that screws down in and that's what uh, forces the flywheel to break free and come out so not a difficult deal it is a special tool you have to order it you can get them on amazon or other places online so just order you one up before you even start this job because there really ain't no way to do it without that tool unless you want to risk uh breaking something screwing something up the right way to do it is with the tool Well, we've tried and failed, and it looks like the only way we're going to get room is to pull this shock off of here and try to get enough space to get in there and, and work on the darn thing. So, just trying to find the right size wrench. 
unfortunately everything's metric now they don't make this stuff american so we got a 19 millimeter looks like on both sides all right so we just pulled the bottom uh, of the shock lifted it up with the farm jack high lift whatever you want to call it braced it from here lifted it up got the shock out of position so that we could get the impact and here's the impact still on it we didn't have to uh, hold it steady or anything just put the impact on it and let it ratchet away and uh, it pulled the flywheel off now this right here is the part that is supposed to be broken and looking at it surprisingly it does not look bad so that's interesting so we're gonna have to analyze this and try to see is there something else wrong that we couldn't see but this is your uh, sprague. sprague clutch so it's kind of a bearing and a clutch all in one and uh, that's what is supposed to lock up when that starter engages well it wasn't locking up the starter was just spinning freely so of course this was our assumption of what was wrong and uh, we had to order the polar so we just ordered the new clutch and everything but now we've got to get in there and analyze it and see if there's anything else that we might have missed because uh, you know usually when these things are bad they're they're obviously bad and this uh, is not what I would call obviously bad so we're gonna Try to figure it out. Okay, so we're pulling this uh, sprague clutch off of here. Five uh, Allen head bolts, five millimeter Allen head. They one of them wasn't even tight. So okay, you got like a outer ring, which the new one includes, and then. This is like a bearing unit. Strangely though, looking at it, I mean, I don't see anything that appears broke or wore. Now it does just spin in there. I'm not sure how that works if we compare it to the new one. The new one spins freely as well. Hmm. So, still no clue. I mean, it looks the same. I don't see any uh, evidence on this new one or the old one. I mean, we take it apart, it all looks good. It doesn't look to be broke anywhere. I don't see any signs of wear. Not even sure if, uh, okay, so you got a little bit of wear on the race, but not bad. So the question is, or remains, was this the problem? We don't know. If it wasn't, we'll have a spare. <laughs> if it was, it'll be fixed but uh, I hate to just throw this thing back together and then find out well it's still the same problem exists so we're still gonna do a little bit of analysis down inside the gears we've got one uh, gear that the uh, uh, shaft on it feels a little bit wobbly and I'm not sure that's how it's supposed to be so I'm going to pull the gear out and take a look at it and see if that can be tightened up. Okay, so down inside this box, the starter gear comes through here. There's another gear that goes in place and it turns this little gear which turns this. Now this little gear, when you look at it, there's a little bit of wobble in that shaft. I don't think that's how it should be but I can't tighten it by hand to feel for sure that that's it 
So we're going to pull this snap ring off, pull this gear off, and uh, take a look at that shaft and make sure there ain't a way to tighten that or that's how it's supposed to be. We're just going to get in there and do a little analysis and see what it looks like. Okay, so snap ring pliers, we pulled that gear off. It just slid right off. And there's our wobbly deal. And you can see that there's a nut there that you can tighten that up. So we're gonna tighten that up. The problem is that normally you would expect that if this was too wobbly and it was somehow kicking out and not engaging the gears that you would see some damaged teeth. And I don't see any damage. So I'm still skeptical of that being the actual problem, but maybe it uh, is a compounding problem and it was just uh, one little thing contributing to another, I don't know. But looking at all the teeth on this big gear here, I mean, they all look perfect. I don't see any damage at all, so we know we weren't jumping teeth, at least not on the big gears, but the splines on the uh, starter are very tiny, and so maybe this was enough give to, to let this other gear have a little give, and, and that uh, made it so the splines of the starter weren't grabbing. That's about all I can think of at this point. We're going to get in there and tighten that up and start to fit it back together and at least see how things go together. So stick with us. That's where we're at. All right, so here's the gears back in place. We tightened up that, that lower gear. There's no wobble in that now. You can see that it turns this bigger gear over here. Now, I will say this was uh, reverse threads, and we didn't have the right size socket on that. It's like a probably a 20 or 21 mil, I don't know. So a 13 16 was close enough to get it tight. So that's what we used. You got this uh, rod that goes in here and then it also fits into the stator cover. And we're trying to get the starter back in right now so we can look at the fitment of this whole thing. All right, so here's how all the gears fit up and everything. So we got the starter back in. That was a bear. The secret weapon was Lorena with tiny hands was able to get in there and get them nuts all threaded back together. And we got the starter bolted back up. So here's the shaft of the starter comes through, matches up to this set of gears, which it's got the big gear underneath, which turns that gear, which turns that gear. And then that spins inside that bearing clutch, that sprayed clutch, and that should uh, engage the flywheel, which turns the crankshaft. So that's how it all works. I mean, everything is fitting up tight. There's no play in any of it. So the only thing I can say, it may have been a, a you know, compilation of things. One thing led to another. So that uh, we know that shaft on that one gear was loose. Now it's tied, everything fits great. There's no damage to any gears, there's no sign of wear, there's nothing to say that anything was slipping in there. Uh, but maybe something was off enough to make that clutch not work, I don't know. It doesn't, uh, you know, add up in a simple manner. So we put the new clutch, we mounted it to the flywheel, and uh, we're just going to throw this thing back together and, you know, try to turn it over and see what happens. But, uh, I don't know, everything looks good. So, that's where we're at. Stick with us. Let's see how it goes.